Hi everyone, in today's tutorial we are going to compare corner pin tracking data from Mocha with power mesh tracking data from Mocha itself. As you all might know that we can export alembic mesh from Mocha using power mesh tracking techniques. So we will check out all this in this quick tutorial. So stick with us. By the way, I already made a couple of videos about general way of using power mesh in my channel. So if you guys are interested, I have added the links to those videos in the description. So kindly go ahead and check there. So without further delay, let's jump into the tutorial. As you can see, we have the footage here. I'm going to do a quick playback. You can see this is not that much uh, a complex shot, but if you zoom in on a face, you can see there are a lot of deformations on a face, which is literally very hard for us to track. So let's suppose if I'm going to remove all these markers or let's suppose if I'm going to do some uh, paint works on a face or remove her face expressions a bit, using power mesh can be very handy. So let's see how is that. Cool. So we are inside Mocha here. So I'm not going to explain the complete properties of Power Mesh in this video because there are tons of videos in YouTube explaining all those properties. So straight away we are going to track. So let's take an X-Pline and uh, let's draw a shape for her face. So instead of a drawing shape on exactly her face, I'm going to draw a shape just outside her face. Uh, my shape is ready. I'm going to go into the properties and click on this mesh button straight away You can see there is a mesh here here. We have lots of properties for power mesh which are very powerful Definitely learn how to use all these properties in your work So I'm comfortable or I'm okay with generation mode as uniform and I have kept the mesh size as 16 the rest all the settings are okay for me in the mesh generation tab and inside mesh tracking I have smoothness. I might tune in uh, smoothness as maybe 30 and the rest looks okay to me so before tracking what I have to do is maybe occlude those eyes uh, from this tracking because come back to Nuke you can see she is winking her eyes which can definitely affect our tracking results so here we are inside Mocha again so let's turn off the mesh what we can do is let's take X plus spline and I'm going to draw a spline around her eyes possibly like this one more on a left one this looks good if you want to see how it looks you can see in the matte view again before tracking you have to do one more thing i already created a mesh using this spline so right now if i'm adjusting the spline it is not going to affect the mesh so i'm going to keep the spline inside phase right now because i don't want unwanted motions from areas outside her face so i'm going to tighten the spline a bit inside her face cool so if you turn on the mesh view, you, you can see there is no changes in the mesh, which is super handy. Properties are perfect for me. So let's track. Cool. So we can play and see how our result looks like. Seems like a good result. But if you're not convinced with the result from the mesh, you can definitely go ahead and uh, edit this mesh. You can. Cool. So I'm pretty much convinced with the result and uh, this is my mesh and this is my tracking data. So let's export the track inside Nuke and see how we can make use of this. So export track. Here we have a bunch of properties. So let's export this as corner pin and uh, click on copy to clipboard. Here we have Nuke. So what I can do is like go back to first frame, take a frame hole node, take a copy pre -melt, draw a spline around her face. Obviously it's very rough so so definitely make sure uh, you are drawing it perfectly. So I'm going to maybe feather this in a little bit. My pre-melt result is ready. So let's merge this and uh, definitely it will not match because we have to paste that tracking data here. Oops. Here we have the corner pin data from Mocha. I'm connecting that into the pre-melt result and uh, setting the reference frame which you always do. I have a shortcut for that so there we go oops that's terrible i would say because we did a mistake cool so we are inside mocha again and let's turn on the subsurface there we go this is the issue so let's turn off the mesh and what we can do is we can simply scale this up a bit and keep this on a face maybe a bit further so everything is set now let's export the corner pin make sure it is exporting as new corner pin copy to clipboard there we go this is the new tracking data let's swap that here deleting the old one set the reference frame and now you can see the result there we go we have some deformations at least with the corner pin so let's compare the result first frame there is no change obviously 
there we go we have some kind of changes here this is the input one and this is the output definitely it is matching but uh, you know face emotions and all these things are completely changed i don't know how good our power mesh results gonna be cool so we are back inside mocha and so let's export this as an alembic mesh export track inside the pull down menu you can find alembic mesh data here also you can fill out the reference frame which you are going to use inside nuke so my reference frame is one i'm going to save here uh, because i cannot copy alembic mesh data to clipboard so i'm going to save this here cool everything is saved let's jump into nuke i'm going to copy this and paste it over here take the merge node because we need that and uh, let's do a quick camera projection so for that i have to take scanline render a camera so instead of taking a new camera node here let's take a read geo node and import our camera and mesh from mock so let's import let's create all this in one node cool so we have camera here we have the mesh here let's connect the scene or object into the mesh from mocha and let's connect the camera here and let's connect the mesh into the pre-melt result and connect that here into the merge node cool so now let's compare the result i hope it will match so before showing you the result let's uh, jump into the 3d viewer and uh, you can see we have the mesh here which we just exported from mocha it's just an animated mesh and can be pretty useful in our world yep so let's jump into the normal view and compare the result that's absolutely brilliant right though you can see all the deformations are there in power mesh now i will compare the result and show you the magic so this is my input and this is my corner pin data you can see emotions are different but if you compare this you can see the result is there almost there and also you can see the markers are matching pretty much exactly there are some issues but definitely we can make use of this mesh for our work and you can see the mesh is completely matching if you want to see that perfectly you can see that here this is just a frame hold and you can see <laughs> magical you can see the emotion right she is smiling that's absolutely brilliant so this is the simple thing which i want to show you with this tutorial and i hope it made sense to you like how powerful this power mesh from mocha is and how we can use that alembic mesh in various ways in our work we can use this for particle generations we can make use this for cleanup we can make this use for rotoscopy and lot other ways which right now i can't think of so i hope this tutorial is super useful to you if yes please give a thumbs up to the video and let me know in comments how you felt about this tutorial until next tutorial it's manoj signing off thank you for watching